Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today's topic is Ridge Regression. I'm Gus and this is Endless Engineering, so let's dive right in. So let me start out by talking about what regression is. And if you're not too familiar, feel free to check out my video on linear regression. I'll leave a link in the description below. So in a regression problem, we have a independent variable x and a dependent variable y, and we want to find the relationship between them. And in this example here, we're going to do what is called a linear regression, where we the relationship is assumed to be linear. So we say that y is equal to x transpose theta. And let me just say yi and theta i bar. I'll explain what those mean in a second. i is related to every point here. So I have multiple points, n number of points. And so this is the index for every point. So yi is x bar transpose. And x bar transpose in this case is 1 xi xi squared all the way to xi to the power n. So I have essentially um, n to the power, so it's like an nth order polynomial. And in my case, theta, or let me just say theta transpose, because theta is a column vector, but I want to make things fit here, is going to be theta 0, theta 1, all the way to theta n. So I have n parameters, and I have these uh, n order polynomials. So when I multiply those together, I get my model, right? And so a, a typical problem is when you have an nth order model like this, you might end up doing a fit that looks something like this, right? So it hits a lot of points or it finds really good solutions on the training data. So when you fit such a model, you've overfit to the data of the training, and when you deploy it in the real world, when it encounters data it's never seen before, then it doesn't know what to do, and you get a, a bad estimate of your value. So one solution from my prior video to do this fit was to say that I have a cost function j that's equal to summation of i 0 to m and I do x i transpose theta minus y i squared, right? And in the previous video we did uh, gradient descent and we solved this problem and we were able to find the theta that fixes it. So this is essentially saying, you know, my model minus all my measurements squared. So this is essentially a linear least squares or an ordinary least squares. If I do that, I'll fit something, but it might overfit. And the ridge regression allows us to have a, a partial solution to this problem where I don't need to overfit. So what I can do is I can add a term, and I'll call it lambda times the 2 norm squared of theta, right? So this, these double column, these double uh, dashes here around this means it's a norm, and this subscript 2 means it's a, it's a second norm, and squared is just the square of that value, right? So what I'm doing here essentially is I'm fitting to the data what this term is doing, and here I'm keeping these parameters as low as possible. And sometimes you'll hear the term shrinkage applied to this, uh, or you'll hear the term uh, L2 regularization and these are all the same thing basically you're using the l2 because the l2 norm and regularization means that you're making your parameters small you're regularizing them or shrinkage meaning you're shrinking them right so this is great so how do i solve this problem now so what i can do here is i can rewrite this in matrix form this summation i can rewrite it in matrix form how do i do that i take all my x transposes for every xi Right, x i bar, I stack them together. So I make a large x matrix where I stack x1 transpose, x, x1 bar transpose, x2 bar transpose. I stack all of those until x n uh, tra bar transpose. And I make another large matrix y where I stack all my y measurements. y i, so y1, y2, all the way to y n. And I can write this whole term as um, X, oops, that's wrong. So capital X theta minus capital Y whole transpose capital X theta minus capital Y. So this term is the same as this term right here. Let me just, this term here is this term. And now this term right here 
The second norm, if you're familiar with it, is essentially the square root of the summation of all the squared elements. Right? So when I square that, the square root goes away. So I can write this other term as, you know, the square of a square root gives me the sum of all the elements squared, and I can write that as theta transpose theta. So this is going to give me the sum of all the elements squared. So this is my cost function, j. Right? So I have this cost function now, and I need to find the value of theta. Okay, so now that we've established that my cost function is x theta minus y transpose times x theta minus y plus lambda theta transpose theta. And this lambda right here is basically a hyperparameter that you have to tune for your specific problem. I won't go into too much detail about some of the techniques used to pick it. I'm just going to say it's, it's a parameter that you have to tune and select so that you can find the best model that fits your data. So, now how do I find theta? Right, that's the question. So we're going to treat this as an optimization problem. We're going to try to find the theta that minimizes j. And the way to do that is I take the derivative of j with respect to theta. And this first term right here is a quadratic term. And how do I take the derivative of this? We get a 2 because it's quadratic. And then the derivative of whatever is inside the bracket, which is x transpose. And then the bracket itself, x theta minus y. Right? Plus, this is also a quadratic term. So lambda is a constant that stays as is. A quadratic term here, I get 2 times theta. Right? So now I have this derivative. What do I do with it? I set it equal to 0. So if I write out this equation, the 2 and the 2 go away. And then I take this x transpose and I multiply this bracket. I get x transpose x times theta minus x transpose y plus lambda theta equals 0. If I take this x transpose y to the other side, and I have a theta here and a theta here, so I can write this as x transpose x plus lambda i times theta equal to x transpose y. So I took x transpose y to the other side, it becomes positive. I factored out the theta, it's right here, so x transpose x times theta, and then I have lambda times theta, this lambda times identity is because these are matrix, and ve uh, matrix multiplication, so I can't just put a constant here, lambda, which is a scalar, I have to multiply by identity that fits the right size of x transpose x. And now I can solve for theta, as you can see, I've isolated theta on the right here, and y on the, uh, sorry, theta on the left here, and y on the right, so I can invert this matrix, and I can write theta as x transpose x plus lambda i, all inverse, x transpose y. And that gives me my solution to theta that minimizes this cost function. So essentially what we've done here is we've solved the ridge regression problem by stacking all of our measurements and all of our variables on top of each other in this capital X, capital Y matrices. And we found a theta that is dependent on this lambda here. So I know x, I know y, only lambda is unknown, but I'm going to pick that as a parameter. I'm going to tune that based on my model. And so then I can solve for theta. Now what's interesting here, if this lambda number right here, what you can think about it is, it's, it's a way to change the singular values of this x transpose x matrix. So the larger it gets, the smaller it gets. Now I would recommend it being a positive number between 0 and 1. Don't go above 1, that's never a good idea. Uh, but also, another thing to note is if you set lambda equal to 0, this term goes away, and you're essentially solving an ordinary least squares problem. So a ridge regression is an ordinary least squares, tacked on top of it a nice term right here that does the shrinkage, or L2 regularization, of the weights, or of the parameters of my model. That way I don't overfit to the data, and I get a nice model that can generalize in a good way. And obviously the more data you have, the more you'll generalize. I hope you've enjoyed this endless engineering video, and if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you like this, there's a lot more where that came from. Think about subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell. That way you get a notification every time we drop a new video. Thanks for watching.